Hey guys, Loretta Magana here with New Filmmakers Los Angeles. Today, I'm talking to director Juan Uribe about his new film, Lo Azul del Cielo. Let's take a look at a clip from the film. ¿Cómo te llamas? Camilo. Sol, como la estrella. Uno tiene que soñar, pero luchar por lo que quiere. Juan, why don't you give our viewers a brief synopsis of your film? So, Lo Azul del Cielo is the story of a middle-class Colombian guy that after doing the military, finds himself with no future and uh, not wanting to be a bad guy ends up in a situation of uh, taking care of a kidnap uh, Spanish guy. He ends up falling in love with uh, his daughter and at the end it is love that becomes a trap for his own destiny. You said the genesis for this movie came out of a play that your friend had written. How much of the original play did you keep when you were writing this script? There's very little in the movie of the original play. The original play it told the story more of a sicario, which is a paid killer by the cartels. And um, it was much more violent, and it was uh, specifically written for the times of Pablo Escobar. And uh, so I wrote that screenplay in, in the year 1999, and I came very close to make it with, as a Spanish co-production. And because I wrote that part, that Spanish part originally, it was just a politician a Colombian politician, but I wrote that as a, as a hook for a co-production. So I kept that character and then in 2008 changed everything, even steer away from the original play even more. Uh, and uh, the film, the only thing, there's very little left of the play. I mean, I guess the, the skeleton of the story of this guy falling in love with a girl that is unattainable to his level, that is basically what I've kept. What made you want to incorporate classical music and then the animation at the end of your film? There's a, a very uh, good anecdote for that because the Spanish actress, who is a friend of mine, came to Colombia to shoot the movie and she's also a, a poet. And uh, it was the last day she was flying back to Spain and uh, she came very close to the crew and then she, there was another ending, completely different, no animation. The film ended, diff I, I really don't remember now. And she wrote this little story to me and she said, Juan, look, I want you to have this, this you know. And I read that and I said, I got to get in, this into the movie somehow. And I changed the ending and I just told her, look, start telling her a story like a little child that's going to bed. And, you know, you saw the movie, that's how it ends. And, uh, and then the idea of an animation came months later. I tried montages and then I, I just found out this Russian uh, animator here in Los Angeles. She's a teacher at Cal Arts, and, and she fell in love with, with, the, you know, with the idea, and she shot this thing in animation, frame by frame, in 35 millimeters. So it was, it was, quite, it was a, a great experience, and, and, and it wasn't planned. You know. Was it always your intention to leave the ending ambiguous for your viewers? All the things that you said are, are valid. You know, I, I tend to like, to like ambiguous endings that don't really tie it up for you completely. And, and, and the film ends up, you know, the, the protagonist dies and it ends up on, on, a, on a bad note, on a very, you know, tragic note. And, um, and I didn't want to end the movie like that. And, and, and there was, there's a fable in, in Spanish that say that, you know, bad money is never is going to do any good for you. I, there's probably an equivalent in English, right? So I started thinking of this as, as this is the fable of that saying, you know. So, uh, so that's how it came to be, you know. Why did you choose this particular piece to be your directorial debut? I come from a photography background, from more from a, I used to be a DP in commercials, uh, you know, in Colombia, and then uh, slowly, you know, you start integrating that into movies, and then I was in Colombia doing commercials, uh, kind of, you know, successfully, and then I, I got accepted to AFI. I made a very short video, and that's what changed kind of my life. I came here, and I was like. Uh, went to school, it was my first time working with real actors, and, and then I, I, got, I got hooked into this thing, and that's, you know, and I'm still here. You know, originally I came here to LA for one year, and it's been like 20 years since I've been here. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today.